God's good to us. And we're glad to be in his house tonight to worship and serve him. We're glad you could be joining us here with us on Facebook and YouTube. And we're going to open in prayer in just a few moments. Uh, but we uh, did want to make uh, mention just a few things for us, just by way of, of announcements for us. Again, we're for John to send out. I've been so glad you can tune in. Make sure you uh, leave comments and let us know uh, how things are and any prayer needs that you have as well. Uh, we do want to continue to remember a lot of folks traveling in these times. Gary and Ruth and uh, Laura and Linda and the Woody's all traveling. And we just want to pray for God's blessings for them. Uh, we want to pray for Danny and, and keep him in our prayers. And um, a situation came up over the weekend with Gary and Ruth's family. Their, um, their uh, grandson and Noah were really a difficult situation. So we keep that in our prayers as well. Is there any needs anybody else had in mind to mention? Here. Okay. Sister Alana's kids, we sure will. Anybody else? All right. Well, Mom, if you would open us up in prayer. And just, we agree with you. Whatever need that you have tonight, we agree with you. The Lord is more than able to minister to you. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight with gratefulness in our hearts that you are our God and that you love us. And we pray that you'll just be with us and work in us, Lord. Just help our service tonight. Touch us, Lord. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you'll be with Nathan as he brings the message. Bless him and guide him and give him your favor. And we pray for, it, for all of us here and we pray for everybody who's listening. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you'll be with us that you'll keep them safe on their trip, bring them here safely. And we pray that for their family, we pray for Noah, that you'll touch him and his mother, Terry, that you'll touch them, that you'll work in them and help them, Lord. And, and I pray, dear Heavenly Father, for Anita's family and Woody's family, that you'll bless them as they're traveling. Bless Adam as he's uh, uh, going on his trip and just keep him safe tonight and bless him, Lord. And thank you so much that they made it back safely. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, also that you will uh, be with uh, um, all of our other people that you'll touch. Laura and Linda, they're about to set out in the morning for New York, and I pray that you'll be with them and give them your safety and guidance to just be with them. And we pray for our kids that you'll be with them this summer. We pray for Olana's kids that you'll bless and be with them and touch them and guide them. And everything that they need, we pray, Lord, that you'll provide it and guide their lives. And all of our children, we pray that for every one of them, that you'll bless our children and guide their lives. Just touch us, Lord, and help us with our service and just be with, we pray a special prayer for, for our um, brother and sister Christians, Lord, that you'll be with them in all of this time. We pray for our country and our president as he leads us in these perilous times, that you'll just be with him and give him your wisdom to know what to do. Just touch him and help him. And also, Lord, we pray that you'll be with uh, Israel and touch and protect them. I know that you told us to always pray for them. We pray for their peace, Lord. And, and we pray, Lord, that you'll give us strength and, and protection from the virus and that you'll just and help us not to be afraid, but just to worship you and know that you have everything under control. And now, again, we thank you and pray that you'll guide our service, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we wanted to share a, a word with you tonight. And this is uh, Sister Elena, if you wouldn't mind. Um, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 13. We're talking for just a few moments with us tonight here uh, about decisions. We need to make good ones, especially in the days that we live in. A lot of people have trouble with that. And we want to uh, think about the decisions that we're making and make sure that God is in those decisions and that he's directing us, showing us what to do. And we wanted to think about it a little bit because decisions are not easy. Sometimes... Uh, the answer might seem like it makes sense, but it doesn't always make sense. So, go ahead, Ellen, if you would put that up up here. 
And we're going to talk about a specific decision during World War II. And, and so we're going to look at this. And uh, I do have a helper tonight. Joe Lana has volunteered graciously to come in to help and just to see what she thinks about this decision. So it's hard. Uh, and that's, that's kind of the idea. So we're going we're to read through this and we'll see what Joanna thinks about it making decisions because we definitely want to see that. Not, it doesn't matter how young or old we are, we need to be able to make good choices. During World War II, uh, many, well, almost 75, 80 years ago, we're talking, Winston Churchill, the leader of England, had to make a hard choice. He had to make a decision. The good guys, the Allies, had broken the Nazi code, the German code had been broken. And it was found that other that the Nazis were going to bomb Coventry, a city in England. And there are two choices that Winston Churchill had. And so Joanne is pondering these choices tonight. So you could either the first one would be evacuate the city and save maybe hundreds of lives uh, from the bombing that's coming to the city. But then the Nazis, because the evacuation would have to be speedy, would know the code had been broken and would have to change their code. And the other choice is you don't tell the city, but that costs hundreds of those lives. But the information keeps coming and many more lives might be saved down the road. And so this decision, like many we have, may seem simple at first, but it really is complicated and a lot of things have to be considered. So Joanna, I'm going to think about it. what would you do if you were in this case and why would you be that way? Okay. Uh, because you could evacuate the city, but maybe like little dummies. <laughs> Almost everyone is safe from in different spots in the city, and uh, they would think that they're actually the people, but some of them would have to be actual people going to walk around. So. Okay. Okay. So you go ahead and evacuate everybody and leave some dummies. Okay. Me excluded. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, okay. That's a well thought out answer. It's a very creative solution. So, definitely give you, you points for that. And there really is no right, it's because these are hard, there is no right or wrong answer. The point of in saying this tonight is we've got to give all our decisions to God and see what He would have us do because He'll help us. The, the easiest answer might not be the one that's right. And a man named Lot would find that out. But anyway, let's talk about what Winston Churchill did, and then we'll, then we'll go into Abraham and Lot. Our story. What did Winston Churchill do? Churchill had to choose and chose the second course. So he decided not to tell because he didn't want the code to be broken. And so it did. And there were plenty of people that died, but they decided to go ahead and do it that way because they didn't think they had time to do anything else. And the, but the code wasn't broken, and they continued to decipher it for some time afterwards. So tough choices, huh? Yeah. So, we're, well, let's throw this last one on the screen. Abraham and Lot were two men, two men, two men that had two decisions too. Like them, we need to make our decisions be good for God's big plan. And so what's a decision that's really good to make with God in mind, Joanna, that you can think of right off hand? To follow him. Very good. We do need to follow him with all our hearts. Amen. So let's give it up for Joanna. Thank you, Joanna, for your help. Very awesome. It's not easy to make decisions. And that's, again, we're, we're saying that that's the point. And what, what seems like to be so wrong, uh, I like, sometimes I like it. We'll go to the Mexican a lot. My brother likes it a whole lot more than I do, but we'll get Pico to guy. And I'll eat some of that pico, and I find out if I decide I'm going to eat too much pico, and do, I do so at my peril. <laughs> you can imagine it's some spicy stuff. And so the decisions are hard. You know, we sometimes have to make them um, against what we really want to do. So how do we make better choices? Just to talk with us real brief, and Sister Elena, if you wouldn't mind to put the, the verse four of that set, Genesis 13 and verse four. Abraham found out the way. A very good way to make sure. He says, uh, and there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. As he wandered through the wilderness, following God's direction, he called on God's name. That's, that's what's going to keep us current. Whatever decisions that you and I are facing, 
we need to keep calling on him, directing our hearts toward him and not just toward what we see in the natural. Because those decisions a lot of times are made very poorly. And there was another man that did that and made his decisions poorly. Abraham's nephew was named Lot. Abraham and Lot were working together in the Holy Land. And Abraham's called the father of all who believe, and Lot was alone for the ride. And that's pretty much what he's known for today. And part of the reason for that is he made a bad choice. And so, Sister Atlanta, if you could put up verse 10 for us, please. Verse 10. Because Abraham said to Lot, they had, they had to make a decision. You know, if you go, Abraham said to him, hey, we got to go, and I'll let you choose even where to go. Abraham was good like that. And it says in verse 10, And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw the plain of the Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. But destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord. And we'll stop there. And Lot looked out and he saw the grass was greener on the other side. Literally, that's what he saw when he looked out at the choice he had. And the choice he had, though, wasn't good, but heard of the name Sodom and Gomorrah, it isn't pretty what happened to them. Because even though it might have looked pretty with natural eyes, it wasn't that way in the spiritual. And we need to have, we need to keep our altar current like Abraham did. Our eyes like Lot did. God has something better waiting for us if we're willing to make those good decisions. We have to learn from, from our uh, mistakes. We have to make sure that our decisions are put before the Lord constantly. But all around the trunk, you know, the trunk where it had been cut, he said, that's what I did. And he told us his, his mentor, his, his superior about that, and the mentor said, let that be a lesson to you. It's not good to make a hasty decision in the wintertime when everything is hard. Sometimes we've got to wait for the spring to come and make sure what's the right decision, whether it's a living or dead one. And that's true for us right Many of us are going through some difficult times. Our world certainly is. And whatever we find ourselves in, we sometimes want to make hasty decisions. Decisions that we really haven't given to God yet. I want to encourage us tonight. Whatever decision that we need to make, let's be patient and wait for God. Like Abraham, he took, put that altar out there. And he was willing even to submit to somebody like Lot who was younger than him. God blessed him for that in the end, being patient and waiting. And make every decision come to the Lord and trust him. Even if the decision doesn't make sense with our natural eyes, if it's his decision and his choice, it'll be the right one. And in whatever our time we we make those right choices. And so we encourage you. And one of the, the best choice that any of us have ever made was... Um, to serve Jesus and know him. It might not make sense at the time, but when we serve Jesus and put him first place, it, it makes all the everything else will fall into place even when it won't seem like they will. It doesn't mean we won't have problems. It doesn't mean we won't have hard choices, but it will mean he's going to be with us in those choices. And so we want to pray for everybody. If you need to accept Jesus as your Savior, he's right here tonight, wherever you are watching this. If you have another choice that you need to make, we agree with you for that. And so we're going to pray and ask God to bless tonight. Father, we just ask in the precious name of Jesus, everyone that's making a choice, out uh, who's watching this message, that you'll give them the exact choice they need to make. And first, if they need to make that choice to know you as Savior, to give their lives to you, dear God, so that they might be truly saved. I just pray that that be the choice they make tonight. If there's any tonight that's just struggling, maybe they've served the Lord in the past, but they're not serving Him now. I pray, Father, that they make that choice to rededicate their lives to You. We ask, Father God, that You give uh, the, the drawing of Your choice to make those good choices. If someone maybe is choosing right now, headed towards an addiction, or maybe they're choosing right now, headed towards something that's going to draw their life down toward a toward a, a, a dark path. We believe that you can shine light, dear God. As people make that altar to you, just as Abraham did, we believe for that one making an altar you, to you tonight, that they will hear from you and be able to make the right choice. We believe that, dear God, that any choice free will be made under, under your guidance tonight. And we love you, Lord. We believe, dear good
good testimonies of how you're walking and close watching and in our congregation here that Lord will know just exactly what to do. Not making choices just because of, because of how things look, but making them because you're showing us. We believe for you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're so glad you could join us out there. And uh, again, let us know if you, you have any needs and testimonies too. We'd love to hear that. And we just pray God bless you. And we'll be back with you on Father's Day. Sister Ruth will be sharing uh, Father's Day morning. We look forward to her message. And I uh, hope you can tune back in with us then. And God bless you tonight.